Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. It is time to have a look at some comments from Esmin over the last day or so, which talk about a few things with this major update coming up. Obviously, with the teaser trailer come out, now it's time to discuss some of the finer details. Now, if you don't know who Esmin is, uh, he is a community manager for War Thunder, which kind of acts as a liaison between the developers and the standard player base. He usually is quite active on the forums and other places, and to be quite honest, does a fantastic job. He's easily up there as one of the uh, better parts of the kind of team uh, when it comes to the community management stuff for War Thunder. And uh, at the same time, is always clear and pretty precise when it comes to his thoughts. Uh, so in this video, we're going to go through some of the things that he said and also give you a general overlook at what's going to be happening over the next few days. Remember, we have the general pipeline. You have the teaser that comes out, then you have the dev streams, then you have the dev servers, then you have the updates. And don't worry, if you stick to this channel, I'll be covering all of it for you. Uh, so make sure to subscribe so you can see it all. The other part of it is the Hudson Mark V is temporarily available. Uh, if you want it, it's available for 700G in the British tree. Uh, this might be one of the last times that you're able to get it if you're specifically interested in the vehicle. Uh, it's a bit of a hodgepodge, meaning that it doesn't really have a place in the game uh, because it doesn't have a great armament and also it's quite big and uh, easily uh, destroyed. So I wouldn't highly recommend it, but it is quite an iconic piece of history if you are interested. Anyway, let's get into the comments. The first piece of news is heartbreak for American mains, and it is pretty simple. The F-A-18 has been confirmed to not be coming in this update. The Hornets will come out later, obviously in a later update, but not this one. So it looks like other nations are getting a little bit of focus instead of America. Now, obviously, there's a lot of people who haven't taken this well uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, many of them play the American tech tree. Other people worried that the FA-18 will be dead on arrival somehow, even though some of the weapon systems still aren't in the game. And the other part of it uh, that is kind of key in this whole FA-18 debacle is the leak stuff, and this is why leaks are a cautionary tale. So, first of all, uh, the first statement that Esmin made was the FA-18 has nothing to do with the Storm Warning major updates. We've already clarified as such. Please remain on track. Uh, he also clarified the SU-33 is not an FA-18 because, of course, people were making that um, assumption, uh, basically saying that they were comparable. They're not. Also, uh, I would also recommend staying tuned to the news regarding that, probably with the SU-33. And then um, he clarified about pressure, uh, because there was a guy saying um, that they hope that Gaijin gets pressured, so they backtrack the decision to not release it. And he says, an aircraft is not simply pulled out of thin air due to pressure. That is entirely unrealistic to expect that. The F-A-18 is not planned for this update. Other nations' new fighters are the focus for this major. Many different groups of people are waiting to see a range of vehicles from all over. Sadly, they cannot all come on at once, which is incredibly true. And then the last piece, he says, the USA just received the F-15E, which is currently the best aircraft in the game at this present moment in time. We never set any expectations that an F-A-18 was coming this update. The focus is now on other nations who have been without a new top fighter for some time. And this is incredibly true, and this is what happens when you add a banger jet for America pretty much every update, and also an event vehicle, which is a crazy banger jet for America. People get used to the fact that America is going to be on top over and over again, and when they don't get a new shiny thing, there's going to be a lot of people annoyed. And that kind of sucks, if I'm honest. It, it's there's, there's a few factors into this which kind of annoy me a little bit. And some of it is definitely Gaijin's fault, and others are expectations. So the FA-18 was leaked a few months ago uh, to be coming to the game. It was also said that it was going to be delayed um, in the fact that uh, the leak said that it wasn't 
going to come out anytime soon. Now, the problem with this is, first of all, it's a leak. Leaks can be wrong. They have been wrong in the past. Even from the guys who usually get 95% of it right, they still get stuff wrong. Or Gaijin just changes plans. Or maybe they were just fed wrong information. That's always something that has to be stated with leaks themselves. They're not always something which is 100% reliable. And people take them now as 100% reliable, even though they're not. So we're in this world where people are expecting these things because of the leaks, and if they don't come, they get annoyed. That's exactly what's happening here. Um, because people were told they were going to come, and they're not. Simple as. And this is, once again, kind of a problem on Gaijin's head, because they need to find out who's leaking the stuff, so therefore they can stop that happening. Otherwise, what's going to happen is this is just going to get worse, and people are just going to constantly ask for these things, which they think are coming and are officially announced when they're not, right? The other part of it is we're at a point in War Thunder's history now where there is so much content in the game that people are only playing one or two nations, maybe even one nation. And Gaijin have even said in the past they see when a person completes the game when they complete a nation slash a tech tree of the game. So if you get to the end of the line of a nation, that is seen as like a completed game. Which is nuts, because you have 10 nations in the game, they have plans to add more nations to the game, as I've said, and there is at least, what, three tech trees in each of the nations? Plus, of course, the naval uh, stuff as well. So that's, what, 40 tech trees, something around there? And uh, completing one of those by researching them is seen as kind of completing the game? That's crazy. But it also means that their research system is set up in this way. So there's a lot of people who get to the end of the line of one of these nations, and then what do they do? Well, they want the new next thing over and over and over again. And then, if you keep adding things to specific nations like America, every update, people start expecting those things. So even if they have the best aircraft, which they do, and also how long have they been dominant for? An incredibly long time. The only time where they weren't was when the Gripen was first released. By the way, stuff like uh, these vehicles were released ages ago. Uh, but anyway, so you have all of these things going around. You have all of these vehicles moving about, but America is still insanely strong. So people expect it to consistently be strong. So when stuff like the Eurofighter comes out, when stuff like the Refi comes out, they don't care. They just want whatever America has because they're playing America. And this is the problem, the fundamental one with War Thunder. And it just needs to be addressed. The fact that we have too many people now who just play very minor parts of the game and don't touch anything else. And they get pissed off when they are not served. And I know this has been a problem for a long time in War Thunder, pretty much since the game has begun, because there are people who just want to play specific parts of the game and that's it, and they're going to complain when they don't get stuff, but it's getting worse, and that's an issue. Now, the FA-18 not coming this update, I mean, there's already some crazy bangers this update. I, I can't understand looking at the list of the stuff from the teaser, and even some of the leak stuff, and obviously whenever the dev stream comes, and not be happy with this update. You know, the Eurofighters coming in, vehicles that have been wanted for a long time, the Rafai coming in, which is fantastic too, and then also you have new German top tier stuff to make sure that they're okay, the Panzerhaut bits turning up, the M44, which is a fantastic vehicle. You have all of these vehicles coming in, but now once again, the story is not about those, and is not about how cool or interesting they are. It is just about what are we missing. And that just sucks. And I really hope the mentality changes. There's also some other posts from Esmin about general things. Uh, the first one, of course, um, is about new missiles, because once again... We are always looking forward instead of just enjoying what's in the game and uh, understanding how every time they add this new generation of stuff, it kind of causes issues. I still remember when the AIM-120 was added and it just didn't care about terrain, so it used to lock you through it and just follow you as you went around. Um, but first of all, he said, as we've already said, 
The likes of the ASRAM, AIM-9X, etc. far exceed what's in the game currently, so a new generation of missiles shouldn't be expected super soon. No, they shouldn't, uh, but they'll come anyway, uh, probably next year, uh, just because of the fact that they need to constantly add something new for people to grind and to hammer down the old stuff. And you're just going to keep the revolving door of these things, uh, because that's how the top tier of the game works. And then, uh, he also said, we don't currently plan ARH, so active radar homing missiles, for the F-20 or the MiG-21 Bison. Uh, so both of those premium vehicles won't get it, which is probably a good thing. Uh, I've talked about this before. Premiums in the top tier matchmaker are always something which is going to be rough for people. Uh, because you're basically buying into the top tier of the game, which is one of the most unbalanced areas of the game. And because of how it works, you are usually buying a vehicle that is worse than the top tiers, right? So if you have a look at the Leopard 2A4M can, for example, or stuff like the M1A1 clickbait, these vehicles are very good, they're very powerful, but they're also a step below the best vehicles in the game, which is what you're going to be facing. And that's how the matchmaking works, right? Because if, let's say, you're using, you know, a 12, uh, an 11-7, you're going to face 12 O's, and they're just fundamentally better than you. And usually the gap between the toppest vehicles and the ones slightly below them is huge compared to other areas of the game. So I've never really understood the mentality of buying these vehicles uh, to, you know, try and get them into top tier because you'll fundamentally just be worse than the things that you're facing by quite a long margin. The other part is quite nice uh, about the R2-Y2s. So of course, uh, with Thailand air subtree coming in for Japan, there was a bit of a worry whether the R2-Y2s would stay in the game since the Thai F-84G has turned up and Gaijin did say once they find like replacements for the R2-Y2s, then they're probably gonna remove them because if you didn't know, the R2-Y2s are completely fictional in the way that they're actually in the game. Now, obviously there are other vehicles that are allowed to be fictional, but there are other ones that aren't allowed to be fictional. Don't know why. Maybe the standards have changed. It would be really nice to see a clarification. But basically, Esmin says, Hello! They are not planned to be removed from research with the launch of this major update. However, in the future, this may well be revisited. So, as I've said many times, make sure to get these things researched, because they could easily be snapped away from you. And as a person who knows a lot of people, they missed out on the Panther 2, the Tiger 2 105, and also missed out on the Coelian. Uh, you don't want to be in that state where you are always wanting it back, especially since uh, they're probably never going to bring them back. And that just kind of sucks, especially with the ever uh, mounting amount of vehicles that are fake in the naval area, and also even stuff like the F-16AJ, which is a fictional vehicle too, in the same tech tree as the R2-Y2s. So yeah, kind of crazy. So this week is going to be uh, insane. I'll make sure to keep you up to date. Just to give you a general preliminary thing, usually after the teaser, the next day is the dev stream, and then it's the dev server. If both of those happen, I'll make sure to cover them for you today. If not, they'll probably happen later in the week. And guess what? We'll cover them then too. So uh, we shall see what's going on. This is a little bit unprecedented. I don't think we've ever had a teaser on a Monday. Uh, so we have had them. Um, earlier in the week before and then you know the stuff came out the next day so don't worry i'll keep on top of it for you and make sure to cover stuff as always i hope you have a wonderful day and i'll chat to you soon i'd just like to thank gmg smiley cd beans chieftain mike emn3 galaxy tulio pontecovo brendan quinn carrion crow gus irenicus Pyman, Wartinder, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, B. Young, Ozzy Panzer, Alan Hacker, Liam Shear, Opium Prime, Lafouche, Sem, Aslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R. For supporting the channel.